One of my favorite books of all time is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, as you may be able to tell by this channel name. Originally published in 1937, Hill spent more than two decades studying some of the most rich and successful people of the early 20th century. This included Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and Theodore Roosevelt. And he used the 20 plus years of experience with these people that the average working American would never get a chance to meet to create a success formula, a philosophy of personality traits and criteria that he found that all of these men shared. Today, we have a million different gurus and coaches claiming they have the secret to success but at the time of this book release there wasn't anything like it and the reason i love it so much is that although this book is almost 100 years old a lot of the principles and the philosophies that hill talks about are still sound today and if you look at any of these self-improvement courses or books that are coming out today a lot of them borrow ideas that originally came from this book he even devotes a chapter early in the book to the idea of auto suggestion which today could be called manifestation among the infinite wisdom found in the pages of this book the section that i find myself coming back to over and over again is this section in chapter 7 where he'll list the 30 major causes of failure today i want to go over the top 10 that i've experienced in my life and the ones that i think are most relevant today if you'd like to see the full list of 30 i would highly recommend reading the book so let's get into it Number one, lack of a well-defined purpose in life. If you were to ask 100 people what their purpose in life is, how many could give you a solid answer? Can you? It's so easy to go on day by day, accomplishing the menial tasks required by our jobs or schools without ever questioning if the direction we're heading towards is the one that we wanna end up. Is what you're doing today bringing you closer to the person that you wanna be 10 years from now, 20 years from now? In school, you're told from the very beginning, try to figure out what you wanna end up doing because graduation day comes closer than you think. And it's true, it comes a lot quicker than you think it does and a lot of people are not ready for that moment. Think of graduation day like your death. What do you want your life to look like on your deathbed? You know, it's corny to say, but it's true. How do you want your life to end up? Over and over in this book, Hill states that the only way to get what you really want is to write down on a piece of paper a well-defined purpose in life and a definite plan to achieve it and to stick by that plan every single day. Number two, lack of ambition to aim above mediocrity. There's no shame in living a mediocre life, working the average job, living in a modest neighborhood, for many people, that's the dream, and they find peace spending their life that way. But for a lot, even if they don't admit it, they secretly wish for more. They wish they could travel the world, or they wish they could start that business, or they wish they could leave their hometown. Whether it's due to lack of direction or lack of confidence, most of these people end up staying realistic and never taking a chance to aim higher. A very famous quote by Thoreau goes, Most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. Take a second and read that one more time. Number three, lack of self-discipline. Lack of self-discipline is probably the most destructive and the most common factor when it comes to failure in any aspect of life. If you don't know how to do things when you don't feel like it or you don't want to, you're going to experience the consequences sooner or later. If you can't stop overeating now, it won't be long until you're pretty unhealthy. If you can't do homework without picking up your phone every five minutes, you probably aren't graduating with honors. As Mr. Jocko Willink puts it, Discipline is freedom. Without it, you let your thoughts control you instead of controlling your thoughts. Learn to become disciplined and you can achieve just about anything. Number four, procrastination. We've all been there. Say you'll do something tomorrow until tomorrow becomes last year. Stop waiting for the time to be right. The time is never right. Hill says to start where you are with the tools that you have and better tools will be found along the way. You don't need to be motivated or inspired to take action. You just need to show up and take the first step. Remember that. Number five, lack of persistence. I think the last three go together. When you lack self-discipline, you procrastinate. When you procrastinate, you lack persistence. When you lack persistence, nothing ever gets done. You don't go to the gym twice and get a six pack. You don't show up to school on the first week and get a scholarship to Harvard. Persistence is the key to progress and success in any endeavor. And there's no way to cheat this. You just have to show up every single day and get the work done. And eventually you figure out that the idea of the work in your head is a lot more draining than the work itself. Number six, a negative personality. This is a tough one because it isn't always your fault. Humans are social creatures. We adapt to the environment we're in. Living with someone who has a negative personality can be just as damaging as having one yourself. 
spend enough time with someone who has a negative personality and you start to develop one too. And when you think negatively, you start to develop a victim mentality, like the world is always against you or you're just unlucky or things will never be good for me. Spend enough time thinking this way and those ideas start to come true. If you look at the most successful people in the world, you'll start to notice that they are rational optimists. They don't believe that everything is always gonna be perfect or everything is good, but they focus very little attention on problems and almost all of their energy on solutions. In my opinion, it's better to be optimistic and wrong than pessimistic and right. Number seven, over caution. The person who doesn't take a chance or overanalyzes everything is usually the last one at the table stuck eating the leftovers. When you're overcautious, you usually miss out on an opportunity right in front of you because you're too busy figuring out if it's worth it. In business and in life, usually the most successful people are those who take calculated risks, making decisions with little downside and huge upside. If you learn to make quick calculated decisions, you have a leg up on everybody else waiting and waiting until it's ultimately too late. Number eight, lack of concentration of effort. How many times have you jumped from one thing to the next, never getting good at any of them? The jack of all trades is rarely good at any. I'll give you an example. Last year I got a piano and a guitar at the same time with the intention that I would slowly learn both instruments and then show up to Christmas dinner like a musical genius. Of course what happened was I got overwhelmed trying to learn both and couldn't decide which one to focus on. So I never ended up making any progress on either. If you can devote yourself to a singular task with laser focus, you will notice yourself becoming exponentially better than if you were to jump from task to task whenever you felt like it. Number nine, intolerance. Having a closed mind is an incredibly hard thing to change. If you have a family member or a friend who does, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. For example, if somebody believes that becoming rich is only possible through luck, or taking advantage of people, you can be pretty sure that that person isn't ending up on the Forbes list anytime soon. If you can make your genuine goal to learn and to think objectively and to admit when you're wrong, you are way ahead of a lot of people. Today, there's so many different sources and perspectives that we can learn from. Right now, there's less excuses for ignorance than there ever has been. Number 10, egotism and vanity. Being self-centered and full of ego is a quick way to lose people's trust and to make enemies in this life. These personality traits are major red flags in any human relationship. Everybody's worried about their own best interests. So if you can show a genuine curiosity and care for somebody else's well-being, you automatically stand out from the crowd. Whether it's business or personal relationships, being selfless and humble is incredibly important. So those are the top 10 major causes. I'm Alex, this is Think Rich, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.